The F1H20 World Championship kicks off its 30th season in beautiful Brasilia for the first ever Grand Prix of Brazil. The city of Brasilia was a radical idea. The city didn't exist until it was planned and developed in 1956, replacing Rio de Janeiro as the capital of Brazil in 1960. Built from scratch, it's famous for its unique urban design and architectural treasures. Wide avenues and efficient traffic by urban planner Lucio Costa. Spacious parks by landscape designer Roberto Burl Marx. And clean, sophisticated architectural lines by Oscar Niemeyer. This placed Brasilia on UNESCO's World Heritage List with such iconic structures as the National Congress Building, the Cultural Complex, Juscelino Kubitschek Bridge, and the Cathedral of Brasilia, all located in the Federal District's monumental axis. But Brasilia isn't just about highbrow architecture and urban planning. It's also a city with a beat and a soul and plenty of fun to be had. The Grand Prix of Brazil would draw huge crowds to the shores of Lake Paranoa, Brazilians showing a keen interest in motorsport racing. The governor, Agnello dos Santos Queiros, was there, getting a taste of the thrill of F1 racing firsthand in the F1 H20 two-seater, driven by world champion Alex Carella. Drivers from eight teams converge on Brasilia as seasoned veterans and fresh new talent join the fray. A leading contender for the championship last year, Team Abu Dhabi's Ahmed Al Hamali is back in good health and ready to race, picking up where he left off. Uh, a great feeling for me. I'm very happy after staying at the hospital for a uh, month. Uh, for months, I mean, three, four months, and uh, I, was, I wasn't expecting that I'm going back to racing. Uh, the first race, it's going to be a practice for me, uh, you know, after what I had. Uh, I'll see after the practice, we'll find out. His teammate is Daniel Kamzi, who finished the season joint third last year. I feel uh, good, and uh, also I'm happy for Ahmed uh, coming uh, to race with me this year. And I have a new boat. Baba boat. I will start with the new season with a new boat and I think is a good condition for this race for this year. Qatar team's two-time defending world champion Alex Carella is back. Ah, well, I feel good. We had a good test this winter so I think uh, we find new good solution and we feel comfortable that uh, we can start the season and we finish last year. He's rejoined by the exciting Sean Torrente, back in action after being banned from the last three races last year. So excited to be back, I feel like I can breathe again. It's great to be in Brazil, home of a childhood idol, so we'll see how we do, but hopefully we can race with the same passion as Senna. The Middle Eastern teams will have to contend with an informed Sammy Celio of Mad Croc Baba Racing Team. He's two-time world champion who finished joint third last year with Al Kamzi. Yeah, it will be very tough and uh, long season for us, so the season starts uh, very late, So, but it's good. Uh, I think all the teams has the time to repair the stuff very well. Uh. Oh. And we 
be interesting. Another favorite for the world title this year is 2012 world runner-up Philip Schiap of CTIC China team. Yes, I'm very happy to race uh, in Brasilia and uh, I hope for this season uh, the same result uh, last year. And uh, I think we are ready for a good uh, season and good result to uh, this first race. Accomplished Class 1 and F2 racer Paul Verick Nielsen of Norway joins F1 for the first time with a brand new Team Azerbaijan. Yeah, I'm really excited to be here and it's a new challenge. Uh, I raced Formula 2 last year and Class 1 uh, the previous seven years. So it's really great to, to try Formula 1. Uh, it's been my dream for a long time to test it, so I look forward to tomorrow and try the boat. It's quite similar to Formula 2 but uh, more powerful, so uh, I really look forward to it. He races alongside veteran four-time Grand Prix winner Jonas Andersson of Sweden. Every season kicks off with a dunk test, as rapid rescue procedures are key to ensuring the safety of drivers in one of the world's most challenging marine motorsports series. Pilots have just seconds to get out of their capsized boat. Pin Circuit on Lake Paranoa features sticky freshwater conditions at an altitude of over 1,000 meters. So at this circuit we've got five left-hand turns and one right-hand turn and between some of the sections it's very very short so you're looking for acceleration but on the far side of the circuit you've got that long long straight where you're really looking for top speed so it's going to be a fine balance and the person that picks the right propeller for this circuit probably is going to win the race. Um, racing over a thousand meters um, presents a lot of challenges both for the engine and the boat and the driver. Um, first of all the engine is way down on power so the engine tuners have to use every trick they can to get a little bit of that power back. While everybody's at the same altitude every engine is a little different so he has to tweak each individual engine. The problem with the boat is we run tunnel boats. They run on a pocket of air, compression. But when you're at altitude that air is thinner. The boat doesn't act the same. The first thought is to pull weight out of the boat, make it lighter, make it easier, you know, make it lift easier. But what we found this morning is it's the opposite. We actually have to put some weight in so that we can run more trim because the boat won't find a happy spot. It doesn't have enough compression, enough lift to hold a good spot. So you got to put weight in the nose to run a little more trim in order to get it to that happy spot. And that's what's hard with the driver. It's like, it's the same boat you've been in, but it's like a completely different animal here. It's like something you've never been in before. With only two one hour long official practice sessions, teams had limited time to make the right tuning choice, hustling with only minutes to swap engines. Three rounds to find out which boat will grab pole position. In the first round, Q1, boats have 20 minutes to qualify, with four boats to be eliminated. The 12 remaining boats advance to Q2. They have 15 minutes with only the top six making it into the shootout for pole in Q3, where each boat has two laps and the course to itself. Our team takes the top two spots from the outset. Celio's teammate Philip Roms in 14th, but within striking distance. Just behind Roms is CTIC China team's rookie Xiong Zi Wei in just his second Grand Prix. Team Nautica's Ronaldo Scolati struggles at the back, but his teammate Marit Stromoy stays within the cut. As the minutes ticked away, Singa F1 team's Valerio Lagianella just held off Paul Verick Nielsen, who pushed till the end, but was unable to make it into Q2. Q1 results, the big guns safely in, not pushing too hard, sparing their engines for the last round. In Q2, 
F1 GC Atlantic teams Duarte Benevente and Yusuf Al-Rabayan are unable to advance to Q3, both more than two seconds off the qualifying pace. Just ahead of them is Daniel Kamzi, who's struggling to post a fast time. Stromoy is out with a broken engine. But the real struggle at the cutoff line for Q3 is between Schiap and Cantando, both former qualifying winners uncharacteristically struggling with their lap times. Cantando gets the better of Schiap, but his teammate Lagianella doesn't make it. Q2 results, Celio supplants Torrente and Corella at the top, ready for the Q3 showdown with the final six boats. Cantando has engine trouble, unable to go out. Next is Alhamali. Even though he's in clear water, he's unable to beat his fastest lap from Q1. Jonas Anderson was next up, setting the fastest lap time of the day. Up next, Torrente. He's flying out there, keeping a good line, tight on the turns. And he breaks the 53 second barrier, even faster than Anderson. His teammate Alex Carella follows as Torrente watches on. Carella comes close, but is unable to beat his teammate. Last man standing, Sammy Celio. Can he beat the Qatar boats? He teeters on the brink in his first lap. Torrente has victory in his sights. But Celio has one more lap to go. He pushes it to the max. This time, he just manages to keep the boat steady. And he has it. Celio nabs pole. Torrente settles for second place. Yeah, it was hard qualification, so we saw there was uh, big waves and rollers coming sometimes and uh, you need to be lucky and very careful there, do not to risk too much for because race is tomorrow, so I was quite lucky there, it was big rollers, but I managed to handle them and I uh, was pushing maximum and I had a good setup, the team did a great work, the boat is perfect, the engine is perfect and uh, everything was good, so it was nice to drive it and push maximum and today we re received uh, the pole, so I'm very happy. Final qualifying results. Celio top of the field just ahead of the Qatar boats. Good results for Anderson and Lagianella. Disappointing results for Shiap and Al Kamzi. in their thousands as the first ever F1 GP in Brazil took on a carnival atmosphere. As teams complete final preparations for the first Grand Prix of the year, it remains to be seen how well they've adapted to these high altitude freshwater conditions. Benevente and Cantando changed their engines so they start at the back of the field. Disappointing for Cantando, who would have started sixth. It will be a difficult race. Uh, try to go back in the first positions. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, and uh, you know, this uh, very high altitude uh, where we are racing is not helping anybody because the engine is uh, really suffering it. And uh, also this morning, uh, uh, the feeling is not really nice. And uh, so let's see what's going to happen. Boats complete their parade lap and prepare for the all-important start. It promises to be a thrilling race with two of the most exciting racers back, Torrente and Al Hamily. They challenge two double world champs, Celio and Corella, with the likes of Shia, Al Kamzi and Cantando sure to be breathing down their necks. Sammy Celio starts in pole position, Torrente and Corella right beside him. Al Hamili in the top five, Schiap in sixth, Al Kamzi in ninth, and Benevente and Cantando at the back due to engine changes. Only seconds left for the first Grand Prix of the year. And they're away. Celio leads the pack with Torrente, Corella, and Al Hamili all lined up just behind him. Shiap is nudging ahead of Al Rubayan, trying to keep with a leading four boats. Sammy Celio is first to the commitment boy. Great start from the Finn, opening. <laughs> An early lead. A 
the back of the field, young Chinese driver Zhang Ziwei has a tumble. He's out of the race right at the start, and that is a yellow flag. UIM race commissioner Luis Ribeiro of Portugal looks on as the Osprey rescue team comes to Leo Zhang's aid. Here it is on the repeat. Celio off to a flying start with Torrente, Corella, and Al Hamily just behind him on his starboard side. Leo Zhang falls back as Team Nautica drivers Marit Stromoy and Ronaldo Oscolati leave him in their wake. Celio has the perfect start, first to the turn. It's tricky and choppy at the back, a sharp turn at high speeds, and Zhang is unlucky. There's the action from Osculati's on board. So the racers will have a running start as they await the green flag from the UIM commissioner. The race is back on. Celio knows how bold and quick Torrente can be on the restart, but he maintains his lead, fending off the talented Team Qatar drivers Torrente and Corella. Young Mad Croc driver Philip Roms will be eager to repeat his top 10 finish in Sharjah last year as he tries to make his way up the field. Celio leads the pack, defending world champ Corella in third. Anderson off to a good start in fourth. Also an excellent start for Valeria Lagianella ahead of Thani Alkamzi in eighth and Paul Virick Nielsen in 11th, just behind his fellow Norwegian Moritz Stromoy. Cantando way back in 13th. He has his work cut out for him. Corella in third will have to bring his A game to compete with the acceleration that Celio is producing up front. In lap six, the 2007 and 2010 world champion Sammy Celio is in complete command as he opens a handy lead with Torrente. F1 GC Atlantic team's Portuguese driver Duarte Benevente is in 14th position. Paul Verick Nielsen of Team Azerbaijan sees Cantando fly past on his starboard side as the Italian tries to climb up the field in his own custom-built blaze boat. The veteran Cantando is the winningest driver out there with 12 wins and 30 podiums from 145 races spanning 17 years. Although he's yet to win a world championship despite three world runner-up finishes to his credit. As Rubayan chases the boats up ahead, he too sees Cantando storm past him, this time on his port side. Jonas Anderson, meanwhile, maintains his qualifying position through the race in fourth as his team looks on. On lap nine, Al Hamali off to a solid start on his return to F1 in fifth, but with 2012 world runner-up Philip Schiap breathing down his neck, and just behind Schiap is world number three, Al Kamzi. Team Abu Dhabi urges Al Kamzi on as he makes a move on Shiap. Al Kamzi on the inside of the Frenchman. He overtakes Shiap, but Shiap doesn't back down. Now Al Kamzi has his sights set on his teammate Al Hamali as we see a thrilling three way battle unfold. Alcamzi sets his fastest lap time of 59.83 seconds on lap 9. In lap 11, Celio, Torrente, Corella, Anderson and Alhamali are the top five, with Alcamzi now in sixth, Shiap seventh. Sammy Celio is in fine form and his Baba boat is dialed in just right. Good work from Mad Croc Baba Racing Team as the Finn keeps the snarling Qatari boats at bay. Torrente still second, on target for his first ever podium, and world champion Corella steady in third. Celio with a 2.2 second lead. You can't call that comfy, but it certainly is handy. But of course, another yellow flag could once again bunch up the field and give Torrente and Corella the chance they need to pounce on the leader. Al Rubayan going strong in 10th. From his onboard, Anderson in trouble up ahead. The four-time Grand Prix winning Swede seems to be pulling out of the race. What a shame for Anderson, who looks so strong in fourth, and that's a blow for Team Azerbaijan. Oh. In 
to lap 17, Sammy Celio looks virtually unstoppable as he continues his fine form of the last two days. There's a battle for eighth position as Contando now sets his sights on teammate and fellow Italian Lagianella, who's having an exceptional race so far. Contando trying to get the better of Lagianella on the long top straight to boy number one, trying to nip in on the inside. And Contando does it. Contando overtakes Lagianella to move up to eighth. Great racing from the three-time world runner-up as Team Singa looks on. With just eight laps left to go, Tiny Al Kamzi has overtaken his teammate Ahmed Al Hamali to move into fourth position. Now trying to gain on world champion Alex Carella in third place, but it's a big task, which could be made easier if there were a yellow flag. Behind Al Kamzi is a titanic battle as the tenacious and wily Frenchman Philip Schiap tries to close in on Ahmed Al Hamali with Francesco Contando now also joining in the action, just behind Schiap. Schiap manages to overtake Al Hamali, moving into fifth. Contando now coming up on Al Hamali on the outside of boy number one, trying to pass Al Hamali as they move past boys two and three. Number six and number 24, neck and neck. Contando driving like a man with a mission. Past turn number three, coming on the yellow boy, the right-hand turn, Contando has it. Contando has moved up from 14th place to 6th, with his sights now set on Schiap. The man from Miami, Sean Torrente in second, on target for his first ever podium. He's come so close to victory in several races, but luck hasn't been on his side, suffering his share of technical trouble and crashes but this could be the start he needs to the new season if he can hold on here. The young Finn, Philip Roms, chasing down Paul Beric Nielsen at the back of the field. Roms gets caught in Nielsen's wake and barrel rolls doing a complete 360. The young Finn is unhurt. A yellow flag then. This could be what Torrente and Corella were praying for, bunching the field up and putting them both within striking distance of Sammy Celio. There's the barrel roll again on the replay. Now is the critical moment as the boats line up in anticipation of the green flag. Celio has his eyes on his rearview mirror. Torrente and Corella looking for their chance to pounce with just a lap left. Timing is everything here for the drivers. The race restarted. Celio holds off Torrente and Corella. Sammy Celio was the Brazil Grand Prix champion. Torrente runner up. Corella third. Matt Crocs Massimo Ruggiero deservedly pleased. What a great start to the year for Sammy Celio. Al Kamzi fourth. Shiap fifth. Look at that finish from Cantando in sixth. Good return race from Al Hamali in seventh. Disappointment for Anderson, who was in fourth throughout. The team standings, Team Qatar on top with a 2-3 finish. Matt Croc second, Team Abu Dhabi third. The world standings after round one, Celio, Torrente, Carella lead the field. Also points for Lagianella, Al Rubayan, and Stromoy. Victory here in the Brazil, first time, first time in my career. I get the first uh, victory in the first race of the season, and it's it's great. Whole weekend I I was fastest, so in the free practice, the race, the time trial, so it's absolutely perfect weekend. The team did a great job. They make the give more us best boat, best engine, best prop, and I did quite good job either myself. So we are here and very pleased. First, you know, our boat really ran flawlessly. We had no issues today. Sammy just had the thing to beat this. <laughs> Fast.
fast. I had two opportunities in the race, one real one where I got next to him, but it was in traffic, you know what I mean? When I can make it up and pick and choose my spots, it's always easier from second. But as soon as we got clean, he was gone. And that's okay, we're happy to get the 15 points, get a podium, get a good race under our belt, and move on to the next one. Yeah, it was, uh, was hard. Today was one of the hardest races for sure since I started racing Formula One. I tried my best to fire the first uh, 20 laps, but Sam and Sean well, it was too fast for me. But I did my best after I did some uh, error in the yellow boy that uh, I had so many days since uh, half of the race. I keep pushing, but it was really hard. But okay, I third the podium, top three for the start of the season is really good for me. And that wraps up the first Grand Prix of Brazil as we leave South America and head over to Kiev, Ukraine in July for round two of the 2013 F1 H2O World Championship. <laughs>